So far, we have been working with very simple elements. Up next is a more complex element, the navbar. We will be adding a basic navbar. We will be adding a drop-down list to the navbar and we will be exploring the basic navbar options. Then, in the next video, we are going to add multiple pages to our project and link them in the navbar. We are also going to copy the navbar to the other pages, and we are going to test the page using the preview. So let's get started adding the navbar. By the way, this video is part of a larger course about Bootstrap Studio. You can find the full course on Udemy or Skillshare. Check out the link in the description. In the Components panel, search for Navbar. Click and drag the component to the top of the canvas or to the Overview panel. The Navbar is significantly more complex than what we've used so far. Looking in the Overview panel, we see that the Navbar contains the Navbar brand. I will name mine Pause Page. Navbar toggle is for the menu icon. When the width of the page is small enough, the navbar will show the menu icon instead of the nav items. The element navbar collapse contains a nav, which in turn contains the nav items. Each nav item in turn contains a link. We can easily add more nav items by duplicating and we can easily remove them by deleting them. You will see in the formatting bar that you can set these nav items to active or inactive. For now, to avoid confusion, let's deactivate all of them. In my case, I'm going to add three nav elements and I'm going to set them to Home, Gallery and About Me. Sometimes it's useful to add a drop-down list to the navbar. There are a few ways to do this. One way is to add it from the component column. Go to the components panel and search for drop-down. Click and drag the component to the overview panel, making sure it is placed between the two nav items. The drop-down component contains a link and a menu, and the menu contains three menu items. Let's edit the text for the drop-down and the menu items. As an example, I will add the text downloads, software, and resources. And I will delete the third menu item. The navbar comes with some specific options. Let's have a look. In the top of the panel, we have the options specific to the navbar. We can set the background and the text color. We can keep it on default, or we have a choice of many different theme colors. We can also set the position, including default, fixed to top, fixed to bottom, and sticky top. I feel like setting mine to sticky top. Fluid means that the width of the content of the navbar will change gradually as the width of the window changes. If Fluid is deactivated, the width of the content will also change depending on the width of the window, but in discrete steps. With Expanded, we can set when we'd rather see the menu icon or the nav items. In this case, it will show the nav items for medium-sized windows and above, and will show the menu icon for screen sizes that are smaller than medium. Finally, Smart Active State determines whether the navbar shows which page is currently active. In other words, the navbar item linked to the current page will be set as active, with the remaining set as inactive. I will set mine on. This way, the user will be able to see at a glance which page he is currently viewing. So that was a quick overview of the navbar. In the next video, we are going to add some more pages and we are going to link them. We are also going to copy this navbar component to the other pages in a way that when we change one of them, 
all the navbar items will change. So see you in the next video. Bye for now. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, why not support this channel by liking and subscribing. You can also check out my website for more free stuff. So long for now. See you in the next video. Bye bye.